In this video, we're looking at the Sony FDR-AX53 Handycam. It is a UHD 4K video camera introduced back in 2016. You can still buy it brand new today, 2023. We won't be doing an unboxing as that was already covered in a prior video. We also have done a very comprehensive video that covers everything on this camera. In this video, we're gonna look at image acquisition, the differences between HD, Full HD, Ultra HD, the Sony adjustment ring and all its many modes, and then how to move images from your camera to your PC. And then finally, we're gonna conclude with some sample images for you to judge the camera. By the way, everything that you're looking at has been shot in 4K and edited 4K so you can better judge the output images of this camera. Before any images can be acquired with this camera, you'll need an SD card. Make sure it is the right type of card for HD. You'll need to look for the 3 and 10 symbols. And to insert this card, we simply slide open the door. The corner that's cut will face down and it'll slide in and then You'll give it a slight push and it'll stay in there. Make sure to close the door. While the card we inserted is brand new, if you're repurposing a card, then you want to make sure you go into Menu, Setup, Format, Memory Card, and then it'll ask Execute all the data will be deleted when format is processed. And it tells you that it's going to take about 13 seconds. So if it's a card that you're repurposing, make sure there's nothing on it that you want. And then proceed. Once it's done, you get a completed message. Hit OK. X. X. And you are ready to record. We already know that this Sony camera can record in two HD formats. Full HD, 1920 by 1080, and then Ultra HD, which is 3840 by 2160. But for comparison, I wanted to show you Standard HD, which is 1280 by 1070 on this 4K monitor without any scaling. This gives you a better idea of how much information is available from Standard HD, shifting over to Full HD, and finally, Ultra HD. You might be thinking, wait, my television doesn't do that. You're right. Your television will automatically scale up the image to fill the raster of the frame. Therefore, even if you're watching a 1280 by 720 image, it will fill the screen for you. Prior to any shooting, we're going to explore the manual ring settings. Simply press the manual button and hold. You'll get a menu on the LCD panel. Use the ring to select zoom and then press manual again. Now you can control the zoom function. So that's all done manually. Of course, the problem can be sometimes that you get your finger in front of the lens. I actually prefer just using the electronic zoom in and zoom out, which is also available while you're in this manual mode. The next mode is manual focus. So right now the camera is focused on the gumballs, but we can shift this focus closer to us, throwing everything out of focus, or by turning it the other way, we can bring the background behind the gumball machines into focus. We've now switched over to manual exposure. And as you can see, I can dim or brighten the scene by adjusting the exposure level via the ring. And that focus occurred automatically on its own because you can only make one thing manual. And in our case, once we made the exposure control manual, the gumballs came into focus because that was an auto function. As soon as I switched over from exposure to iris, 
the camera automatically adjusted. So now we're looking at an f-stop of 3.9. And when I bring the f-stop to f11, you can see a little bit of change in the depth of field. And that's what you're basically going to get with this adjustment. Unlike exposure, which is more of a, a gain function. We switched over to shutter speed, which is best illustrated by just some motion going on. Right now we're at 250. And if I bring that down to say eight, you can see that there is a blurring that is now the frame rate. And if I step it up to 3000, now I will probably pause this video and you can see that you can get a more detailed snapshot so it can be good when you want to do some motion but if you want to make things blur out you can definitely do that by dropping it down the AE gives you an exposure override and basically it just if you don't like the automatic gain control on it you can set down to a minus one or up to a plus one. So maybe you like things a little bit overexposed over what the camera is picking for you or slightly under. That's the function of AE. Now we're in white balance shift and that lets you shift the color temperature plus four to a minus four and it'll go a little warmer to a little cooler so if you want your color temperature again the problem with using this ring is your finger can get in the way but as you see here here's a little cooler and here's a little warmer this is not to be confused with the white balance controls under camera mode, in which you have automatic white balance, you have daylight preset white balance, and then you have an indoor preset for white balance, and then there's one where you can actually just set the white to a value using a white or gray chart. And then you use the one step and it will make this card that I'm holding look neutral as it white balances. Unfortunately, I can't record that process, but as you see, the card has gone from blue to a white, and now our picture has been adjusted, not to the sunlit area back there, but to the shadowed area that we're in, which is a much bluer. So you'll notice that the color intensity has changed, and if I flip this back over to auto white balance, you'll see a difference in color as the camera makes the best setting for the color temperature. And those are all the functions that you can do with the front ring. And of course, when you're done, you can actually go into the settings and tell it to reset everything. And it goes back to a fully automatic mode. Once you're finished shooting, there are two ways of getting your files into a computer. One, you physically remove the SD card, insert the SD card into a card reader. The second method is to use the provided USB to micro cable, open the side door, plug in your cable, and then insert the short end of this cable into your computer. Regardless of the method you choose for importing your files, you'll get a Windows Explorer. Inside there, you'll see the card. You can open up the card, and now you have to figure out which folder it's in. Or you could just use Play Memories Home, which is available free from Sony. And that program actually lets you just import the media that you need. And it imports it at a much faster speed than you can through Windows. Once on your computer, you can move them into your favorite editing software. Now let's take a look at some of the video output from this camera. The built-in 20 optical zoom is best illustrated by showing something up close. 
and then pulling out. A question many of you may be asking is, why buy a 2016 model camera that has not been upgraded since its introduction? Before we can answer that, let's look at what this camera is not. This is not a pro camera. It's not even a pro consumer camera. It's a high-end consumer camera, but at this price point, you're not gonna get a large sensor. It's only 0.4 inches, and you're not gonna get a lot of manual controls. There's no 4K HDMI output during recording. The adjustment ring only limits you to one manual setting. The camera body seems fragile with lots of little doors that are eventually gonna break off with usage. And Sony didn't include a travel charger. What this camera is, is a consumer compact sized unit that can produce acceptable 4K images, has a rear viewfinder with eye focus, programmable time code and user bit, some limited manual controls via the adjustment ring, a variable speed zoom that can go out to 20x, SD card storage, a steady shot system that works, it can accept an external mic and lens filters, audio can be monitored, some of the camera functions can be controlled via an external Sony app, the battery can be charged through the camera using the AC adapter or the slower USB, and Sony provides free software for basic file management and editing. Currently, this camera retails for $1098, which puts it kind of close to the Blackmagic 4K, which is $1295, but you have to remember that comes without a lens. So if you're looking for a 35 to 100 millimeter lens, that's gonna cost you almost a grand, which puts you into a higher category than this camera will. And of course, you can always go with the FDR-AX 43A, which retails for about $949, the difference being that the A43 does not include a rear viewfinder. The reason I bought this A53 is because of its small size, its great image quality, some access to manual controls, and mostly its steady shot 20x optical zoom lens. These features will provide more versatility than my current Samsung phone. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.